Hello guys and uh, good day to you. Welcome to this, uh, um, I would say course, <laughs> but it's just, this is just uh, uh, about the conditional statement uh, and if, because we already saw how to use uh, if and else, then we are going to see how to use if and we, we have some practical example. Uh, along the way. So without further ado, let's get started. So we introduced the, uh, the if statement. Uh, we say that it was used to check conditions, right? To check condition and see if uh, a condition is met. And if the condition is met, then uh, our script should do something. So now here, um, uh, Okay, the first, the, this, if you don't remember, this is how we wrote it, right? So the if else statement. So basically the if test, test is if something, if something is met, okay? That's why you see conditional. So if then the condition, not conditional, it's uh, between the parentheses and you should have space uh, in between the first parenthesis and the, the first letter, which is C, you see that there is a space and so on and so forth. Then you have you have then, okay, which, which should be there and you have your code that goes here. And if that condition is not met, then else is to say everything is checked, then uh, reply with this code that you see down here, okay? And don't forget, you have to close it with FI. So now uh, it's about the if, the elif, okay? Now the elif, it's a kind of like uh, a second way to check another condition, okay? Because with else, you cannot check another condition. You just uh, suppose that you check everything, everything already. And this is the, the, the end of your, of your statement, okay? Of your block statement. Now with Elif, it gives you a little bit more of opportunities to go uh, a little bit beyond uh, the, the, that uh, restriction, okay? Where you can check multiple conditions. So if you have been using if the first time, then you can check multiple conditions and see how your script goes uh, with that. So as you can see here, we say that elif uh, behaves like uh, if because it's used to check other conditions. Now, when you look at the, the syntax, we have if here, right? We have if, we have if, and then we have our uh, bracket uh, uh, here and here, then we have our condition that goes here. Okay, and don't forget the space that is here. There is always space here. Don't forget that. Then, and we can put our then here, but if we put like this, don't forget to put the semicolon here, or we can put it just like this, like you see, okay? All right, so if you put it this way, all right, then your condition goes, your code he goes here, like for example, echo something, or I don't know, any command that you that you like to have. And then you have the elif. Now the elif comes uh, as a second option to check other stuff, okay? So the elif here, um, to check other, I mean, it, it, it's another statement to check other condition, okay? So now you can see that I have condition two here, all right? Now that condition two will be checked if the first condition was not met, okay? If the first condition was not met, then the second condition is going to be checked and I can use it as, as many times as I want, okay? Then this, you see that I have a then here, but with the else statement, we never have a, a then and there is no condition to check, okay? So now you can see here, uh, that we put our code and optionally we can put uh, else or no, okay? But don't forget if you start an if statement, even if it's a nested statement, okay? When we say nested, it means that, for example, there is if here and there is uh, fi here, but in your code, you wanna check another sub condition, okay? Then you can do another if here and another fi here. So that's, that's what we call nested, 
uh, nested uh, um, uh, condition, uh, if, if statement condition. Okay, so without further ado, let's go and have uh, a look at uh, an exercise, uh, I mean, an example that, I, that I've that i done. So here is my server that is, uh, I mean, the guy is sleeping, but I'm already connected to it. Okay, so I'm just going to um, go through Visual Studio Code and here you can see that uh, I have installed a plugin called SSH. So if you want, you can do that. You install a plugin called SSH. And then if you type like this, and then you take the very first one that will be presented to you, you can see that I don't have installs. It means that I have already installed it. And once you, once you will have it, this, this thing will appear and you can click on it and then click on the plus sign here. When you click on the plus sign, it's going to ask you the IP address and the username that you want to connect with it on the on the remote server. Then as soon as you do that, you check down here, it will say that it is trying to connect after you have provided your password and that will be successful. And now if you want to open it, you just do a right click here and then click on connect to host in current windows okay in current window okay so in my case uh, everything was done already so i'm just going to go to my files on that server so this when i do like this it means that i'm already on that server and i don't need to um i don't need to create my files so that they stay on the the, the my physical machines okay they're gonna stay in my remote machine which is the virtual one okay so all those files that you see here are the files that i just created and they are residing inside the virtual machine which is this ip address 10.0.0.1 a1 okay so now let's jump to the to the thing that uh, that is interesting here. So here you see that we have L, uh, if, L, if, else statement, okay? So let me click on that so that you can see what I did. Okay, here you can see that I have, uh, I mean, I have this, okay? I didn't put all the details like you know, but always do that if you can, it's just to explain. So that's why it's like this. So here I always start with my, bank line okay then after the chebang line i just go with uh the description and here you can see my description says uh, this script helps understand helps understand the difference between um if elif and else okay okay so here you can see that i start to i start with the command clear that will clear whatever was presented on the on the terminal, okay, whatever was present on the terminal. Then uh, I have some variables that I have defined here, like for example, A equal to five, B equal to zero, and C equal to 10. Okay, so now here on this next line, you can see that I have if, okay, if uh, this condition here, meaning if the value, because you know that we put the dollar sign to interpret the, um, to interpret the, 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 the variable, because when I put like this, these are variable, okay? So if the variable of A that will be uh, five is equal to dollar sign B, which is zero, then, so when I put like this, I mean to say that this is true, okay? So I mean to say this is true, but we are, we know together that a is not equal to B in this case where A is equal to five and B is equal to zero, meaning A is equal to, to zero. That's not possible, right? But when you write your script, always put something like this, okay? So if you say here that this is equal to this, then the condition here should be uh, related to this, okay? So now here you can see that I'm using the the dash EQ, okay? This dash EQ, uh, I can easily uh, demonstrate that, how to use it. Uh, let me come back to the slide here. To the slide here, okay? So here we have integer comparison. We will go back to the script, but I don't want you to be lost. So here we have integers comparison. Integers are just digit or numbers or numerical uh, representation of uh, whatever you, you, 
you will you will you understand so compare integer in single brackets okay so we compare integer in single brackets in this case so here you can see that we have the we have every uh, it always start with dash something okay dash now you have g gt okay gt here means greeter and then done so greeter done okay so if uh, here you check to see if the condition that is on the left is equal to the condition that is on the right side okay now if uh, it's greater than the condition on the, on the right side so if it's the case then you know and here you check if it's greater than or equal and so on so far as you can see in our case we are trying to use this one okay so when you compare integer or numbers integers or numbers okay integers or numbers like one two three four all the way to whatever you you understand you have to use uh the uh, this uh this representation okay so that's why you see you saw me using it so if you are using the this one it means not equal to okay this one is less than as you can see very simple okay so now if i come if i come back um sorry uh where's that yeah so if i come here okay now i'm pretty sure we are on the same pace because here you understand now that this means this is equal to that one then okay we don't forget our then after the if echo okay here i'm just doing some uh fancy stuff okay just some small stuff uh checking conditions on a on a uh, and b okay checking condition on a and b because a and b were declared here so now i'm just simulating like if the system is doing something but obviously the system can do that in just a millisecond okay but i'm just um i'm just trying to make it uh do like two seconds okay so i'm using sleep two here to say uh, sleep for two seconds before you reply okay then here you can see that now I say, okay, if this is equal to this, then you should reply by saying this is equal to this, okay? These are equals. Elif now, this is what is interesting here, okay? Elif, Elif means that I'm checking, I'm trying to check another condition, okay? I'm trying to check another condition. Since we have three, since we have uh, three uh, numbers here, you can see that I'm doing Elif, then dollar sign a which is five is less than dollar sign b which is zero in that uh, in this case okay so in this case now if that condition is met then echo uh, always checking conditions on a and b since it's a and b that are that are represented there sleep for two times and then uh, tell me if uh, a is less than b okay in this case and if again you remember i told you that we can provide multiple conditions that we uh, we want to check with elif so this is the case now elif then dollar sign a greater than than c okay the so on so forth as you can see and then checking condition and if uh, a is greater than c in this case now if a is greater than c meaning if 5 is greater than 5 than 10 then tell me tell me that a is greater than c okay now l if uh if uh dollar sign a is uh um is equal to c okay it's another condition that we are trying to check here so if uh that is greater that if that is equal to c okay then you have to tell me that they are oops sorry i think i have to put here i made a mistake sorry about that okay so if this okay is equal to this one then tell me that 
A. Hmm. Uh, no. Here you see, right? I made a lot of mistake here. And here you see, because we are dealing with A and C. Okay, so if A is equal to C, then you should tell me that A, R, A and B, A and, <laughs> yeah, I know you saw that, right? A and B, A, A and C in this case are equal to, uh, are equals, okay? And now all the condition were checked, okay? Now all the condition were checked, we come at the bottom with the else that will say, okay, we, we check everything and we didn't find. So this is what you should display to us. Okay, now we tell him that if all those conditions are checked, then else do this, checking condition, conditions on A, B, C, dollar sign A, B, C, okay? Sleep, to, uh, sleep for two seconds, then echo, uh, dollar sign A is greater than B and, and less, and less than C, okay? So now that, uh, now that we have everything set in, uh, and remember we have the FI because we open that here, okay? And something that I wanna show you about uh, Visual Studio Code is that it's really great. For example, here is one statement, okay? I can just do like this and then the other one are gone and I can come here, okay, I say, okay. Then here, just to make sure that I put my elif, my if, okay, here is my if, and here are all the conditions, okay, that we are checking. And if I'm interested only on this one, then I do this to, to display that one. So you can, you can do that as well. Okay. All right, so now that uh, we are good with that, uh, you can also do this like this, okay. And uh, okay, so now that we are good with this, okay, let's call our terminal control tilt, okay. Remember, we are still on the virtual machine. So if I do LS here, or everything that you see up here are also here. All right, now uh, I've created my file. I gave the, the, uh, the permissions, okay. And I'm going to also share with you how to uh, run your script in different ways, okay. So now uh, the first way you type like this, okay. And then we are on if, all right. So if I type enter, you see checking condition on A, B, on A, on Dallas, on five, that was, so it, it went straight to the last, to the last statement, right? We can see that it went straight here. You see how intelligent we intelligently we we made our script. Okay, so it went straight down to the list because all the other conditions were not met. Then he decided that okay, this is what I'm going to do. And now let's verify. We said here that if the the other condition are not met, okay, then tell us if uh, a is greater than B and less than C. Is it true? Yes. Now, A here, it's how much? It's five, which is this, okay? Then B is zero and C is 10, okay? C is 10. Now, the script went ahead and checked to see that all the conditions were, were not met, then I have to deal with the, with the less, with the last statement here, with the last check, okay? Now he decided that, okay, I'm going to display five is greater than, than zero and less than, than 10, okay? That's true, right? That's true. <laughs> okay, now uh, let's change uh, this to five, okay? For example, right? So you already know that here, uh, is going to check if B and uh, A and B are equal. So it's going to pick up this one, right? The if. Okay, so let's check that and just make sure is the case. All right, so we run. And then you see, check in condition on five and five. Five and five are equals, okay? 
So we know that five and five are equals. Are equals. Nice. Now, if we put, uh, we didn't put the case where A is equal to B and is equal to, to, to C, right? So you can also do that one if you want. You can uh, um, do like this. Let me implement that. I didn't, th I didn't think about it, it's just now. Okay, so I can put another elif here and I'm going to do this way. I'm going to explain that later on. I'm going to do it this way, okay? I'm copying that one and then I'm pasting that here. We are lazy sometimes, okay? So if A is equal to, if A is equal to B, okay? And so there is a condition where we can check uh, doing, um, um, how do we do that again? I don't know if it's A. No, um, oh yeah, oh yeah, I remember. Uh, it's M percent, okay? And uh, so we are checking the first one and the second one. So we are, we, are, we are telling him that if dollar sign A is equal to dollar sign B and dollar sign A and dollar sign, oops, dollar sign A is equal is equal to dollar sign, dollar sign uh, C and, and it's not easy. And dollar sign, um, dollar sign uh, B, dollar sign B uh, is equal to, uh -oh, is equal to dollar sign uh, C. Okay, oh, we didn't put the spaces here. So always remember about this. I didn't prepare for that one. So hopefully it will not, it will not fail, okay? Okay, so now we are telling him that, okay, now check if uh, dollar sign A is equal to dollar sign B and also the dollar sign A is equal to dollar sign B uh, C and dollar sign B is equal to dollar sign C. Then checking condition on dollar sign, dollar sign uh, A, dollar sign B, and dollar sign C. So now here we are going to see to say that dollar sign A, dollar sign B are equals. Okay. So now let's put that condition, let's take the first one here, okay? So now the first one, uh, that one where we wanted to see if he is going to pick up the first uh, statement. So now with the first statement, when we type enter, it checks and see that five and five. Oh, we already did that now. Let's put five, five, five everywhere and see if he's going to pick up on this one here, okay? All right. So now it is checking. Uh, I think we need to we need to do something. We need to do more here because he already checked the first condition here, and then it's not take it's not uh, it's not taking care of the rest. Okay, so here we have to tell him that. Uh, so. If we want to go a little bit further with that, it's going to be complicated because we have to put this everywhere, okay? This, we have to put this everywhere, okay? We have to put that everywhere and make the condition where this one is alone and then the other one are. Uh, so let's keep it simple, okay? Because here he already checked the first condition so he doesn't care about the rest. The first condition is met then, it's not my problem with the rest. So let's just remove this one for now. Okay, let's just remove this. All right, so um, yeah, so sorry about that. Yeah, okay, so this is how you can make your script. You can make it better, like you just saw that there is a problem with it. Okay, so that was for the if uh if elif and else statement now let's go to the next uh the next uh script 
your next one. Okay, so the next one, it's about string comparison. So we compare number with these and we compare strings with these. Okay, when we say strings, uh, these are just uh, letters, like you can see piece of text, okay? These are called strings. Then you have to use stuff like this, okay? The double equal or equal. Uh, when you use like this, it means that the, the, the parameter on the left side is not equal to the parameter on the right side, okay? When you put like this question mark and exclamation sign and equal to zero. Then we have the greater than here, which means this is greater than and then the less than. And if you want to see this, uh, I believe you can, uh, let me do this. Let's just focus on this one. I believe you can type man test and see what the, oh, so all those stuff that I'm trying to use are uh, here, you can see string A, string one and string two. The string are not equal, okay? They are not equal. Uh, here is the expression A and expression B are true, okay? When you put like this, it's the same like the double ampersand, okay? And here is like all, either one is true, then everything will be true, okay? Either one is true, then everything will be true. It will be true. Uh, so on so far here is to, uh, for file checking, like checking that the file exists and checking that the file, if it's a directory, it will give you the nature of the file and the directory. So it's really nice, you should check on that. Okay. So now coming back here, coming back here, uh, let's close this one. We don't need it anymore. All right, so now what is the, the next one on the list? The next one on the list now, uh, you can do some example on that one. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, oh, here is the thing, okay, the dash A. So the expression on the, the, the right equal to the expression on the left, something like that, then they are going to be true, uh, the dash O, okay? Here's the short secret, like, oh, this is what I was trying to use, right? Yeah, the short secret, uh, if you are multiple conditional state uh, uh, statement or multiple con conditional expressions, uh, then you can use this, for example, when you use like this, it means, and okay and then this one which is equal to this means all okay when we say all it means that i choose that one if the other one is not is not available okay so you have a choice so it's just uh, this then uh, here basically we are checking this okay we say that okay if a so here, when we do like this, it means that it's going to check if the condition, when we do this or this, okay? It's going to check if the left one is equal to the right one, okay? To the right side one. So here we say that five is greater than three and six is less than five, which is already false, okay? So here it should return uh, an exit code that is not uh, true, okay, for this one. Or now this is greater than one and six is greater than five. So the result should be this, okay? We can, uh, I don't know if you can do that. You copy like this and then, uh, and then uh, paste that here. And then paste that here. Yep. So you see, you see that, um, no, this is not what I was expecting. So this is what I want to execute, okay? All right, so if I paste like this and I type enter, now this should be true, right? Because it is checking uh, it's data sign question mark for the exist status. It should be true, which is equal to zero. Why? Because we have this that is checking if one of them are, one of them is true. 
and then everything will be true. All right, don't, don't, uh, let's just continue on the, the next one. All right, now here, checking exit status, okay? So with the exit status, we already know what it means. Uh, the exit status is you is usually checked to know if the previous command was run successfully, okay? For example, if I do ls and then I check, okay? If that was true, then it's gonna return zero. If it's not true, then it's gonna be any other number, okay? Any other number. And you can see the man page of LS, I believe that will show that uh, this is for the Mac machine. You can, we can, for example, do LS, okay? And we type echo dollar sign, dollar sign question mark. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, I think I'm tripping, right? If we type LS, this is true because it displays something as a result. Now, if we check the, the exit status, okay, then it's gonna be zero, okay? For example, if I do get 10, get 10 pass, uh, pass WD, okay? And I put my username here like uh, uh, Nadine, for example, and I check the exit status because it didn't return anything, then we are having two just to say that that user doesn't exist, okay? But if I do that with Sterling, uh, with S Goma, which is this user, the current user, we have something that return. Now, if we check the exit status, we have zero, okay? Now let's see how we can implement that with our script. Okay, so I'm going to close that and then come here with the uh, user exist. Okay, now user existence.sh. This script here, I prepare it for you so that you can see how we can do this better. Okay, this way is a way for you to, to make your script even more uh, powerful than the other, the previous one that we did. Okay, because with the one where we were doing with the grep c um, I think there was a problem with that one, but if you go a little bit further, you will see the problem. So that's why I decided to implement this one with the exit, uh, the exit status. Okay, here you can see that we have uh, the description, this uh, script use, uses the ex okay, uses the exit status to check whether a user exists, okay? Now, the first thing I clear my screen, whatever comes uh, on the screen should be clear. First, then uh, read dash p. You already know what it means. It's just to take a statement from a user, okay? Like communicating with a user. Okay, please provide a user ID you aim to check. And then I put the, the, uh, the variable, which will be choice, okay? Now I put echo just to put a space, okay? Which in between. And then I put the git and pass, um, they get and pass WD and the choice of the user. And then I redirect the, the output. I redirect the output to dev null, okay? So this way will make my script being efficient. But let me remove this output first so that you know why I say that. Now we have the exit status here that I put uh, status, okay? Equal to dollar sign, dollar sign equal uh, that is an echo and then uh, uh, question marks, uh, that is a uh, question mark, okay? So now I say here, if that status, okay? If the value of that status, depending on the command that was run before, which is get and password is equal to zero, okay? Then, Okay, we are just doing some fancy stuff here. We are uh, saying that, okay, check the user, tan, 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 tan. Okay, we put this like this because we have this, which is here that can interpret the, the backslash, okay? The backslash and the meaning of the backslash N and the uh, backslash simple so that we can see the user that we are checking. For example, we are emphasizing on that user by putting the double quote and that's how we can control that. Otherwise, if you don't put that, the script will think that this is uh, broken, this is separated, okay? The, the, 
the strings are separated. So here we say that, okay, check, uh, check the user. Uh, okay, we can put something like checking the user on your system, checking the user down, down, down on your system, then uh, hold tight. <laughs> so you are simulating like if you are doing a lot of stuff. So hold tight, uh, we are, and then the smiling face here, hold tight, uh, we are still on it. Then sleep three, echo, and then the user tan, 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 exists on, your, on the current system. Else now, uh, check the user, check the user choice on your system. Check the user and the, the, what the, 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 the user uh, input, uh, the, the input that we took from the user into the variable, we put that there and then same thing. And then here, if the condition was not met, see, the, see here, we are not using elif, right? Now, if the condition is not met, uh, sorry, the user cho choice, that sign choice does not exist on, the, on this system, please check. Check on the check on the user on the user you provided, okay? Just to make sure that that's the right user that you you provided. Now uh, let's execute that and see how it goes, right? Now I'm going to uh, I'm just going to uh, close this one, okay? The, here is the name of the file user existence, so I'm going to close this and also call my terminal like this, I will close that one. And I will just run. Uh, oh, I just had to remove this. And then user. Okay, now if I type enter, it clears the screen first, and then it asks me for, uh, for an input, okay? Now you see, I read, I say, okay, please provide the user ID you aim to check. Okay, I will say S Goma, and then, oh, you see, it is displaying the information about the user, okay? This is not good at the company level. We want sometimes a script that will not that give a lot of details of what it is doing. It just display the result, uh, whether it's good or no, okay? Now, so here, uh, let's do that again. So now here, if you type S Goma, you see, checking the user on your system. So because of the sleep, it is doing this. And then I have the result. The user S Goma exists on, your, on the current system. Now, if I check with a user who doesn't exist, and I do, uh, for example, Lydian, Lydian, Okay, now it says uh, check the user Lydian on your, on the system on your system, and it says sorry the user Lydian does not exist on the system. Please check the check on the user you provided. Okay, so you see that when it finds something, it displays the message here of what it found. But now, like I said, this is an issue. Uh, in, in respect, uh, in respect to the security uh, purposes that the company want to achieve. So when you write your script, just make sure that you hide the, the information. Okay, here we just want to make sure that the user exists. We don't want to show the location and the user ID and all the stuff. Just, just with your user ID, we can do a lot of stuff. So here, let's now go and remove that, okay? So now I'm going to, to take a one. One means the output that you produce, just forward it to the dev null. If it's zero, it means that is the input, like what you type on the keyboard. But when it produces something that you see on the, on the terminal while you type on the keyboard, this is the output and the, the reference number of that is one. Two is for the error, if there are errors, uh, uh, that are found that are found while you're proceeding, proceeding, then you can use two to redirect the error into the dev null. Okay, so that's what we are doing here, and let's check what uh, this uh, this does. If it change, if it changes something. Now I'm just going to do this, and I'm going to provide, for example, Lydian, 
for Lydian, naturally, Lydian is not part of the system, so she's not going to be uh, displaying. Okay, so sorry, she's not part of the system. So now, okay, I realized that I gave the wrong the wrong name, and I'm going to uh, provide something now by saying, okay, uh, as Goma. Okay, now it checks. You see that whether it finds something or no, it doesn't display that anymore here. Okay, so this is how you make your script being efficient. Okay, so maybe you say, Stalin, you are, you are doing something with only one user. Let's check on the other user, right? Pass WD. And if we have another user like Ange, okay. We have Ange, yep. We have Rugal, Rugal, we have Fabiana. Okay, so if we do that with uh, with Ange, now it is checking, hold tight, and boom, the user exists, right? And we also have Fabiana. So if we put here Fabiana, Check in, hold tight, we are still on it. Boom, Fabiana exists. Same thing with Rugal. Check in the user on, the, on your system, hold tight, you are still on it. The user Rugal exists on the system. So you see that the script is really efficient and it doesn't display any type of message. Now let's go uh, with the next one, okay? Let's go with the next one where we uh, you are going to talk about uh, another topic there. Let's discover. Okay. Okay, here uh, we have a chapter seven, for loop, uh, for loop script, okay? Uh, here the for loop um, is not really described here, but you can have more details online if you want. And uh, you can just go on Google, type a uh, bash for for loop, and then they are going to explain. But I'm going to try my best here to give you some example of what you need to know about the for loop, okay? So we usually use the for loop in sequence of known values, okay? For, um, it's based on the, on the concept of key value, okay? Key values. Basically, basically it needs an iterator, which can be uh, any name, any name to loop through the value. The key value can be a reference above the for loop or inside the file, okay? So now let's go and discover uh, what all that means. So if you wanna go uh, one step ahead uh, with this, what you can do, you can just type man bash, okay? Man bash. And uh, if you type man bash, because it's a bash, uh, this is the bash that we are trying to use. So if you try, if you type man bash and going down the list, you can see that we have, uh, we have all the stuff that you see here. You can pretty much go down the list and read through. You can even search for, and all the stuff that I showed through test, man test, you can also see them here, for example, like this. And you can search for, uh, for details. For example, if I type slash and I type uh, man uh, for, or I type loop. Okay, if I type loop, for example, and I type enter, it should take me to uh, somewhere uh, starting with loop, uh, yeah, you can see stuff over there, but uh, I think it's really complicated to search through it. The better, the better stuff is to go through. Um, uh, I would say through the the web at this moment because it's a very large file and you cannot really control it the way you want. So you have to uh, to search through the web but you can also find it here if you want. Okay, so I'm going to, we are going to continue then with uh, some examples of what I did. But basically the follow-up is really easy as well. So here I'm going to take, um, which one? 
the first one here, this one here. I'm going to take this one, the for loop. And here, for example, we have different way to run the for, the for loop, okay? We can run it with uh, something that we call sequence, okay, sequence. So this sequence that you see, for example, when I put like this, I can run it through, if I type uh, what is, uh, as, uh, oh, what is the sequence? Okay, uh, nothing appropriate. <laughs> okay, I know the fix for that. I, and then I will just type man, man db. And this is fixed now. Um, waiting, 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 just like great guys. Well, there were a lot of uh, man pages that he had to add, and you can see that we have uh, we have uh, eight thousand two hundred and fifty manual pages that were added uh, successfully. So now, uh, if we do uh, let me exit from this account and then type uh, what is. So you see here it says print a sequence of numbers. So if we type now sequence dash dash help okay we should see what they are saying here then you type sequence and then the the last the, the last option and last and then here first and last and you can see the other option first increment and last okay dash f dash s separator dash uh, stuff okay so you can read through and understand what it does but i will just uh, demonstrate what it does so if you type sequence and then for example 20 it will display all the 20 all the <clears throat> all the 20 number from 1 to 20 okay and if you type uh uh 21 for example one it does this by default is one and if you type three now it display from three right and if you type five now if you type uh one one and then three like this so it goes one it start from one then it add three to the next one and then continues so on so forth you can so it does that uh, sequentially all right so now that you understand what it does uh, this is uh, what i have in my script here so basically i'm just uh, telling him that oh um give me so basically here is going to do what is going to clear the screen okay so let's make something here that will be um for example let me type 100 and then type here by uh, five start from two okay start from two jump five and then all the way to 200 all right so nice so now here um i i have this okay so it's going to clear the screen first, then it's going to use the for. So this is the first way we use it for something. So this I can be anything. It can be your initial, for example, it can be L, it can be B, it can be C, it can be D, it can be whatever you want. But now what is the keyword here? What are the keywords here are this, this, and the container, okay? This is the container. So for this in this, it means that go take uh, take this as a variable, okay? So this is the key and then uh, here are the values inside. So for this, take uh, initially take the first one, then go inside and bring it. Take the second one, go inside, bring it. Take the third one, go inside, bring it and so on and so forth, okay? So that's what it is going to do. So if I remove, I put the back tick here just to say that it's a command that I want to execute. If I put like this and I and I continue and I say after the four, we put do here, okay? Do something. 
for this, do something. And what we are, we are asking him to do is to say, okay, display the number of seconds according to dollar sign i, because I told you this i is a variable that goes inside this command and take the different values all the way to the end. And then sleep one time to say seconds because we want to display in seconds and then done, okay? So if I run that here, what is the name? For loop. So if I run that here, let me try to make it like this. Okay, if I run that here and I type, oops, sorry. If I run that here, oh, I told you I'm going to show you the other way to uh, run a script. So if I type bash and then I type the name of the script, which is for loop.sh, okay. So you see what it is doing. It's not doing anything. It goes through a sequence and then 10 and is done, okay? So now to tell him that this is a command that I wanna execute, I'm gonna put either dollar sign and then parenthesis or back tick like this on the left side and back tick on the right side as well. Now, if I come back here and I do like this, it goes one, two seconds, three seconds, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, done, okay? So it has been doing what we call an iteration. It was iterating through the, through the numbers, okay? This is what it's called iteration, all right? So this is the first way of doing it. For example, if I replace that by car, okay? If I replace that by, if I replace this by car, for example, I can, this is another way that I'm, I want to show you. So if I replace that by uh, car model, for example, Tesla, Tesla, uh, Mercedes, Mercedes, um, um, what else? Honda, okay, Toyota, uh, Suzuki. Mm, Volvo, guess what it's going to do? It's going to display a different car model, okay? And here we can change and say, okay, data sign for them. Let me choose another one here, okay? I don't want you to. So for them, I'm trying to work with car, so I'm going to replace that by, by uh, C, okay? To say car, for example, or it can be anything. Now I'm going to say here that display what display uh dollar sign c okay dollar sign c is a car model okay now if we come here so it's going to iterate through this different model until it reach the the last one okay so now if we come here and we run this it says car uh, tesla is a car model mercedes is a car model on is a car model toyota is suzuki and volvo okay nice all right so now uh let me show you the other way now too the other way we use the for loop okay we can use the for loop with increments okay we can do that by incrementing. This is a, a bit a bit more advanced, but uh, it's very really simple to understand as well. So here, basically, I'm just putting my clear to clear whatever comes before, and then uh, I use the four, and then I open double, um, yeah, double parentheses because I'm dealing with numbers. Okay, so here I put a. Okay, I initialize a to be zero first. Then I say that. Okay, semicolon space A now should be less than 20. For example, I'm choosing any number. It can be 1000, it can be whatever, okay? Now I'm telling that, okay, when you are going to check, when you are going to check the initial value of A to uh, that is less than 20, okay? When you go to the next level, add one to the previous value of A, okay? so. The first, the first time is gonna be, it's gonna be what? Uh, zero, okay? It's gonna be zero here. The dollar sign A will be zero here, okay? Then the next value after that is going to be one and then two and then three. But because I'm adding, 
I'm saying that, okay, um, then here is, the, this is what it means, okay? But now here, I'm doing echo, do echo, and then here you can see that I say the number equals, equals to or less than A, or less than A, than A equal to. So here I'm just resetting the value of A again. I'm telling him that A, take the value of dollar sign A, which will be the initial value plus one at this moment here. Okay, don't be confused with this one here. <laughs> I know it's a bit it's a bit confusing, but if you watch if you watch the video like uh, this, especially this part like two or three times, you will understand it. So here I'm saying that take the value of a plus one, okay, uh, which will be one at this moment is. Um, so the 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 number that is here will be greater than the number that is on the right side, which is dollar sign A, because dollar sign A will be initially equal to zero and then so on and so forth until it decided, it decided that, okay, this is less than, this is less than zero. The, the next number is less than, than 20, then I'm going to stop there. So let's go ahead and mm -hmm. run that and see what it does, okay? So now I'm just going to, you already know the different way. And I'm also going to show you how to debug a script. I'm going to um, do that. So to debug a script, you do bash, okay? And then you type dash X, that, uh, that is to debug. And then you put, um, you put your script, which is in this case for loop dash increment. Okay. Now, what is going to do when we say debugging? What it does is it will show you what it is doing. Okay. It will show you what it is doing while the script is running because you put the dash X. Okay. Where you put the, the plus, plus, plus that you see, it means that this is what I'm doing. I'm sleeping. Okay. I'm sleeping uh, for one second, then I'm taking the value of A plus, of A equal to uh, A plus one, which is this, <laughs> and then I'm comparing, I'm uh, taking also this, okay? And then so forth, so, so on and so forth, and then it displays a different value that you see. Now let's run it without the, the uh, the debug, okay? If you have an interview where they ask you how to debug a script, then you already know what to do. There is another way you can put set dash X here, okay? You can put a uh, set dash X here, okay? At the beginning of your script, or you put it at a place where you want to debug, okay? So for X, uh, all right, so let's say I put that before the clear and uh, we can even put that here if we don't mind. We can even put that here. So uh, now if you want to debug your script, you can also do like this and then you just run it here. It's going to do the same thing like it was doing previously. But I know you are already overwhelmed, so I'm not going to bother you with that. So I'm going to remove that set dash X here. All right, and then just uh, continue, um, okay, let it finish. Yeah, okay, so now it is done. What we are going to do is just run it without the debugging, okay? Okay, now if I type like this, so you see here that um, here, like I said, the initial value of A is zero, but plus one is gonna be one, which is, uh, greater than the initial value that was a zero, obviously, right? So now you can see that it is going on and on and on and on and on and on until it reached the value where uh, 19 is the number that is less than 20, okay? So I did this just to display that when it will reach 19, uh, 20, it will not go anymore. But if I put uh, something that is less than if I say A is less than A, is less than zero, uh, is less or equal to 20, then what is we do is, is just going to uh, continue until, until 21, okay? So let me do that and run it. So let me do that a little bit bigger like this and then run it here so that you can see it, okay? 
So now the initial value is uh, zero, but since we added one, it shows that the number equal to or less than uh, than a equal to one is zero at that moment. So that was the initial value of a. Okay. So basically, we are taking the initial value. We are adding one after each iteration. Okay. So now you see here that when we reach zero, we, when we reach twenty, because we see that a should be equal less than or equal to twenty. Okay. So that's why he he he, he dare to go to it dares to go to all the way to 20 okay but when you put that straight uh less than then it cannot do that okay so that's um yeah that's uh how we do that you can go a little bit further with it if you like it uh for me it's already great this way but uh we are going to separate from here now i'm going to go with the other one the other for loop uh which is uh this one the for loop uh Three. In this for loop tree, you can put a sequence, a sequence of numbers. So if you don't want to put the, the sequence that start from one all the way to, um, to uh, by default that start from one all the way to um, to the number that you precise like like this, for example, because by default it does this. So if I say ten, it display from one to ten. But now if I put uh, here zero, I hope that you will do that. Yeah, it display from zero all the way to 10. So if you uh, you don't want to do this way, okay, type in the long way like this, then you can just go and type the dot dot between, you put the, uh, the square bracket zero and then dot dot 50, okay? And then you have your value uh, that are going to be picked up uh, with this I. I put I there because the developer, most of the time they are doing uh, with the I, but I'm not a developer, I <laughs> just, uh, I just exploit some uh, small part of it. So then now I'm going to just uh, execute that. I think you understand it, right? It's going to take a, each value from zero all the way to 50 from this range, okay? And then sleep one time. So now if I, if we run our script, bash loop, uh, for loop three, not three, Mm -hmm. And then we run like this. The current number is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Mm -hmm. So it's going to go like this until it reaches the the end of the loop. Okay, so uh that's how it works that's how it works so okay finally uh it reaches uh 50 and then it ends there okay so that's how we run it now let's go with uh the break the break and uh from my slide i'm sorry about that uh from my slide here you can see the different stuff that we just did where we were taking the, the cars and other stuff. We took this, okay, this uh, other way of running the script where we do the initialization, we put we we uh, put a we put a condition for it to, to be run and then we increment it. Okay, we increment it. So this way of doing and the other way that you saw through here are just the same like we are incrementing okay so if you put like this or you put like this a plus plus okay and then you try to run that i believe if i'm not mistaken it is going to uh that is for loop dash increment i believe it is going to do the same thing you see it is just doing the same thing because this way and the other way, it's just the same. If you don't want to be confused, you just know that you are adding, you're taking A and you are re, you reassign its value, okay? And you increment it to, to one. Okay, so that's how uh, it is done. All right, now, uh, um, what else? All right, so now the breakout, uh, breakout of the, 
breakout of the uh, of a for loop script. How do we break out or out of a for loop script? For example, you have something like this, and the break condition here is just a way for us to say that if a condition is met, uh, then I want you to break out of the script and do something else. So we are just breaking that uh, that uh, section. We are not breaking the the whole the, the whole um, uh, script. Uh, but when you use, I'm pretty sure you are asking like, okay, what is the difference between the exit? Okay, because when we write a script, we can also check for a condition with the, S, the, with the if statement and then type exit. Exit will immediately get out of the script, whatever comes after. But when we type break, okay, break just break the loop at that point. And then if there is something else that uh, we wanted to do, uh, I don't know, whatever it can be, then we can use that. Okay, it, it can go to, to the next part. Now this come at the interview sometime when you go for Linux, uh, uh, especially with Bash, and they ask you this question. So, um, okay, here you can see that we are doing our for i in, uh, for i in value one, value two, value three, and it can be all the way to value whatever you want, and then do, we type our code one, code two, and then if exception, if the exception is met, okay, then break. We put the keyword break here and then breaking out if exception is met, okay? Then fi because we open F, uh, if here. And then we put our code, we put our code here uh, in case no exception occur, okay? And then we put it done to say that everything is done. All right, now let's go and discover that on our terminal, the, our preferred environment. So here we have the for loop break, okay? In this for loop break that you see, I prepare especially for you. Uh, here I'm basically taking just the for loop tree, okay? And uh, trying to meet, a to meet a condition from there, okay? Now here, uh, the description says that this script implements the usage of the for loop with the break parameter, okay? With the break parameter. So here now we type clear just to clear whatever comes before. And then we put uh, for i in the sequence of value from zero all the way to 50, do, uh, do this, okay? Do this. I'm just going, I don't wanna waste your time. So I'm going to remove the slip at this point at this point so uh it's not going to sleep for a second it's just going to go and do that right away so now do for this value of i for the variable i into the different value okay do this okay which is echo and then the current number that he found is this and if now you find that you find that you you find something that is equal to 19 then echo and tell tell us that you cut the number which is 19, for example, and tell me that we will break out of the loop. And then we break here, we put a break here because we put that, we, 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 we've done that, okay? But if there were other stuff uh, coming after that, then it will, it will execute. But because this is just a simple stuff, then it's going to break out of the, of the loop. So now I'm going to type bash and then for, and uh, type break, okay? And if I type like this, then right away, it breaks out of the, of this, of the loop. But if you wanna see that slowly in slow motion, then I can just uh, uh, type my control Z here and then uh, run that again to see it in a slow motion. Then it goes, uh, carry number is zero, one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so he caught the number nineteen, so he got out of the script. Okay. So that's how you can make your script being intelligent by telling him that if you find something, just do like this if you are using the for loop. We can also use it with the wire loop as well that we are going to see in a 
in a few seconds. Okay, now uh, let's go with the continue statement, okay? The continue parameter. So we use the continue parameter just like, okay, uh, we, we found something, okay? We found something and we wanna do something at that moment, special moment. We want to apply uh, something at that special moment, but we don't want to break out of our script. We just want to continue after that. Okay, so it's the it's completely the opposite way of break. Okay, so it ca it, it, it catches something and then it just continue. So now let me. It's just the same thing. I just put uh, continue here, but if you want, we can change number so that we can make it to be 10, for example. And then if he finds 10 and is going to tell us and do whatever he has to do. So I will put here and put continue and run it. Okay, you see that he found let me kill it. So you see, you see that he found the number, he caught the number, but he said that, but we will continue the loop, okay? So he's continuing, it's not uh, stopping like break, okay? So if you have that, uh, that question at the interview, at an interview, you just tell them that uh, break and continue uh, 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 different in the sense that break, break out of the, state, of the statement where uh, you wanted to check the condition and then continue, we'll cut the condition and then continue, <laughs> just like it says. All right, so now we are almost there, uh, hold tight, okay? So um, that's, uh, that's all about the for loop at this point. Um, uh, yeah, yes, yeah, they continue. And now they do while, loop script, okay? The while loop is often used either when in advance we don't know how many iterations we should do, okay? Or a, or to execute a block of, of code if the condition is true or false. So that's where we can use the do while, the do while script. All right, so now let's come here, still in the man bash, you can see that. But I really recommend you to go through the web browser if you want to go scroll down rapidly and see uh, what you want to see. Okay, here now um, you can see that uh, we have a wire loop, okay, which is here. And then here we initialize a number, for example. We say that uh, A is equal to zero, just like that. And then here we say that wire, okay while while this okay which is this number zero is less than 20 just continue the script just continue the script okay like this okay we say here that echo dash e uh using while loop for number a okay then sleep one time and uh and then here we are resetting the value of a all the time. So when it is done with this part here, okay, and then it comes here, it comes here to add before it goes to the next step, it adds this value to the to have the next number. Okay, so we are iterating. Remember, we can put plus plus here. Okay. Um, Okay, so now let's uh, run that. And we are going to do bash while loop dot sh. And if we run it, you see that it is going on and on and on and on and on and on. So basically you can use this with uh, the case statement. Sometime like uh, you give a choice to a user to do something and the user choose the wrong thing, okay? The while loop is there to, uh, to start over until a condition is met. An example of a while loop are uh, uh, the, the daemon, for example, when we, when we did a system CTL of whatever, for example, the, NT, the NTP, 
the NTP stuff, uh, the NTP uh, or the crony uh, package uh, demon or service, they use the while because they keep listening to uh, something until a condition is met, okay? So all, pretty much all the programs are done with uh, while most of the time. So uh, here, then you can see, and here, once everything is done, okay? Once everything is done, echo something at the end to say that the loop is done, all right? So now, uh, here you can go to why to this one okay now is for the infinite one okay so basically this one here it's a uh, this script implements the usage of the infinite while loop so basically this one will sit there forever and do, will not be will not be uh will not be paused until you decide to kill him on your on your own i use it sometimes to chill at work like uh, to to cheat at work like okay i'm doing like i'm doing something and then i'm just running this if i'm done with my task i just i just do this sometime all right so uh if we now uh run it you see here that we are, are i try to explain it we are we just clear the screen then we use a wire wire one okay so we know that um we have two conditions when it comes to the lights, for example, either it is on or it is off, okay? So on means one, which is true, and zero means uh, off, which is false. So we say here wire one, okay? Wire one will always be true, okay? So wire one, do this. So we can basically replace all this with true, just uh, like this, okay? So the first, the first one we are going to do just like this. So wire one, okay, uh, do echo, the loop will never end. So we are just echoing something on the screen. And this is the one that we use to, uh, to do, um, to do the, uh, some stuff with user. For example, when you go to your bank, you put the wrong password, it says try again. And there are like three trials, okay? And if you put the wrong uh, uh, password three times, it, it just block, okay? So we, we do that with the while loop through sometime. All right, so now here we say that it, uh, this loop will never end, kindly, use your keyboard with control plus C to kill me, okay? Then we sleep. So here I'm just going to close everything. And I want you to focus on this, uh, on this bar here, this one down here, okay? Yeah, I just want you to focus on that. All right, so now if I tab bash and then uh, while loop, uh there were infinite and now if i type enter now you see that it goes on and on and on and on and on and on it will never stop it will stay like that forever just consuming your memory your memory size and uh, yeah so it's not doing anything and you can see the progression bar here going down and down and down and down so that's what it is doing and uh, if we do like this, you can see that it's still going down and down and down until we uh, listen to what it is saying and we write it and uh, we read it and then we type control C that will kill it. All right, so that was uh, what I wanted to demonstrate today. And uh, just to, you can uh, play around with it. I'm just going to leave some exercise uh, for this uh, so that you can watch it and play with it uh, on your side. But first apply what you, uh, you saw from the video. And if you are okay with it, then good job. All right, so take care. And uh, oh, one more, one more thing that I wanted to show you. It's uh, this thing. So it's this thing. If I type see, I go to my, home directory and then I do uh, ls minus a 
minus a, you can see here that we have this different stuff here, the bash log, the bash profile, the, the bash RC. Let's look at the bash RC, for example, dot bash RC. So you can see here that we are using the condition, right? <laughs> so it's there for something. So this one here is to check if a file exists, okay, dash F. So you can type the man test and if you see the, the dash F, you will see what it is doing. So uh, if you type man test, okay, you go down the list, you will see uh, minus F here, okay, to check if a file exists and is a regular file. All right, so that's uh, pretty much what I wanted to, to show you that even the, the scripts, sometimes they are implemented, uh, the program itself is implemented with something like this. So just try to work with it and um, yeah, have fun. Bye-bye. It was a great pleasure serving you. Bye.